Hello again. Well, final school exams, especially for matriculants, kick off next week. And with that comes a lot of anxiety for learners. In fact, across most grades, they are writing their end-of-year exams now. The Learning Trust is shining a spotlight at the after-school programs to learners from poorer communities. The organization says these are important for filling the gap where government support falls short. I'm now joined by Charlene Peterson Foss from the organization. Charlene, good afternoon. Welcome to today, and thank you very much uh, uh, for your time. C can you first tell us about your annual Lights On After School uh, 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 program? W what are you doing? What is it all about? Yeah. Hi, good afternoon, Dan, and, and thanks so much for, for having us. So Lights On After School is an annual um, campaign um, and it really um, puts the spotlight on how essential after school programs are um, to learners specifically from, from pure, poorer communities, like you say. I mean, we've got quite a significant number of NGOs, civil society, faith-based organizations who run after school programs and offer this important support service um, to, to some of our most vulnerable learners. And so okay. this campaign annually really, yeah, yeah, so, so you, what do you focus on? Do you focus on literacy skills, on reading skills, yeah. on computer skills? Yeah, so quite a, a vast number of skills. We look at literacy and numeracy programs for learners right from, from ECD right up to matric and other fundamental skills, you know, computer skills, mentoring, sports, um, arts and culture, quite a range of, of skills and so psychosocial mm. support as well. Yeah, I mean, that psychosocial support is very much needed. We know the challenges our schools are facing uh, recently as well with violence in schools and shortage of resources, dilapidated infrastructure, especially at public schools. Yes, I mean, there are so many systemic challenges that are really a barrier to learning for our learners, large classrooms, our um, educators that are understaffed. And, and so, you know, the after school sector really plays a vital role in putting in those support measures to ensure that learners are able to learn um, and grow and create these safe spaces for learning to, to happen. Yeah, just give our viewers a sense of whereabouts are some of your programs uh, uh, currently. I saw something about uh, the Mamelodi Initiative. Is that in Tswane? Yes, Mamelodi Initiative is in Tswane. Um, uh, we've got quite a number of these initiatives right across the country. And um, people who are interested could head over to our website, um, www.thelearningtrust.org, um, and you can see all about the campaign, all our after-school programs, where activations are happening. Um, and some of these activations will be happening um, right up until the end of this month. Um, parents, learners, schools are able to reach out, out and find out where these vital after-school programs are happening. Yeah. Do you find that in those vulnerable communities, the underprivileged communities, if, for example, there is appetite for STEM, the, you know, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics subjects? And, and what kind of assistance do you give particularly for STEM? Because every year when we speak about STEM subjects, we are told we are lagging behind the rest of the world. Yeah, and, and we certainly are. Um, and, and, you know, we did find that there's not such a big appetite, but the more learners become aware of STEM programs, the Mamelodi Initiative, I'm thinking of RNDA in Blue Comblos in, uh, in the Western Cape, um, and there are a number of others as well. They are putting the spotlight on STEM subjects, introducing these subjects to learners, creating a love for, you know, science, technology, maths, and these subjects to really get learners excited about them. And we really see how learners light up, you know, when they say to themselves, oh, but I can become an engineer, you know, I can become a mathematician, I can become a scientist. And so, yeah, it's a lot about cultivating that love, um, but also creating the support so that learners are able to excel in these STEM subjects. Yeah, there's not much knowledge or much focus on these uh, after-school pro programs. How are you doing for funding? Or, and are you in partnership with other similar-minded or similar-focused NGOs to assist you to carry out, for example, this annual Lights On After-School initiative? 
Yes. So in terms of funding, the, the, the Learning Trust itself, we're an intermediary grant maker. So we offer grants and capacity support to these emerging grassroots organizations and communities to help them strengthen their programs and also the quality of these after school programs that are offered to learners. This year for the Lights On Campaign 2023, themed rallying after school. Um, we are, well, we are joined by a youth and after school program office in the Western Cape, as well as the community chest to really drive, you know, lights on after school for 2023. Yeah, I mean, uh, resource wise, when you do this after school program, do you enable or provide the learners who come from those vulnerable communities and disadvantaged communities with tools, for example? Many of the schools, I mean, uh, don't have libraries, they don't have laboratories to do science experiments and things like that. Yes, and that's exactly what after school programs do. They ensure that some of these resources are accessible to learners, you know, like books for reading and also some resources that parents can use at home um, for, for the STEM subjects, um, you know, some science clubs. These after school programs provide some of those um, um, yeah, really important resources that are needed to facilitate learning. And have you been seeing results? I mean, you said this is an annual initiative. When you look back, I'm sure yeah. you track how some of these, uh, prog this program has been performing. Are you able to measure your impact? Yes, yes, most certainly. And individual organizations do that for themselves as well. We've got some organizations with a pure focus on maths and they're running maths clubs and they are measuring, you know, where learners are doing baseline or benchmarking when learners join these programs and also what the results in the end, you know, ends up being how learners have performed and progressed. Um, and in terms of on, uh, in terms of lights on after school, we're really seeing an increasing number of after school programs that are being supported, that are able to extend their services and scale these after school programs so that more learners in vulnerable rural areas across the country are able to access these programs. And what kind of psychosocial support do you then provide? Because you've mentioned it right at the beginning that in addition to the academics, you also provide psychosocial support. Just give our viewers a sense of what that would include. Some of these psychosocial support services are really just one-on-one -on -one sessions, mentoring for students, but a lot of them focusing on life skills, you know, building confidence, um, you know, making learners feel comfortable with themselves. Um, um, yeah, so a lot of that, you know, promoting learner motivation, but also sometimes tackling some of the challenges that children, that children are facing today. Yeah, and are you doing that across the country or you've got selected, let's call them hotspots, where you really see yeah. there's a big need? Yeah, well, at the moment, this year specifically, we've been able to um, activate after school programs in all nine provinces. So they are after school programs that are rallying behind um, um, after school with the Learning Trust, offering their services, a number of them that are able to run, you know, um, and many of these programs I've just mentioned, yeah, we are certainly reaching all uh, provinces in the country. And what's the investment per child? I mean, how much is involved here? Uh, you are a life trust. I mean, you rely on funding, on donors, I guess. And then you, you are an intermediary. You facilitate. Uh, uh, how, how much is this costing? Yeah. Um, um, yeah, they are, they, they are quite, yeah, there are significant costs that go into running after school programs. Um, and there is lots of support at the moment, um, you know, from philanthropy, which we channel some of our funding from, as well some funding that's coming through from government to fund, you know, some of the stipends for our after school practitioners. And this has quite been significant um, in the past 18 months that has allowed us to, to scale the number of after school practitioners we have in the country. I think in the last 18 months, we've been able to channel about 6,000 of these practitioners reaching 88,000 learners. So there is a significant cost involved, but we are able to rally some of this funding. I mean, there's always a need for funding for our uh, rural organizations, you know, to get their programs off the ground and be able to reach much more learners. 
Thank you very much. Uh, that's uh, Charlene Peterson Foss from the Learning Trust talking to us about their annual Lights On After School programs, which is targeted at uh, pupils in uh, disadvantaged areas from poor, vulnerable communities, particularly around this time, building up to exam time. And the metrics will be writing from next week, but uh, most uh, high school grades, of course, are also writing exams at this time of the year. And they all need support, not just academic, but also psychosocial assistance.